Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this video we're going to be looking at doing some basic texturing. I've had quite a few requests on doing uh, some kind of texturing tutorial and I kind of hesitated because there's a lot of texturing information out there on the internet. But I decided to try to do this kind of like a basic tutorial and then maybe later on get more in depth into it. So let's get started. First we're going to look at um, how you would go about texturing. Texturing is something that a lot of modelers just when they hit it they kind of really dread it I guess. Um, when they get into it they dread it some more. <laughs> Uh, I still, to this day, struggle with it a lot of the times, um, have difficulties with it, but I'm going to try to do some uh, basic um, instruction on this, just to kind of get you started on the right path, hopefully, and um, feel free to ask any questions that you come up with, and any comments, definitely. So, I have a cube here, and I just made it blue just because uh, it wouldn't be so boring. So. Here's what you do when you go to texture something, and of course the cube is probably about the simplest thing that we can do to texture, and it gets a little bit more difficult, or maybe a lot more difficult when you have more complex models, but if you get this basic uh, foundation, then you know that, that'll help you out as you go. So when you start to think about texturing something, let's say we're going to take this cube and we're going to put an image on most, pretty much every side of the cube. Um, you want to think about how to break this cube apart to put the images on it. Um, when you think about texturing, here's what I want you to think about. Think about taking your 3D object and a pair of scissors, and it's just paper. Your object is just paper, and you're going to take the scissors so that you cut it in a way where everything lays completely flat on a 2D surface. So basically, you're wanting to make your 3D object a 2D object with a pair of scissors. So how do you do that? So if we were to take a pair of scissors to this box so that we can lay all sides down flat, it might look something like this. Grab this side here, rotate it down, Just grab this side here, rotate it down. And if you're wondering how I'm rotating this cube, these sides of this cube out like this, I've set up a bunch of constraints on it, which was actually a little bit of a challenge, but that's what I did. All right, that one doesn't quite want to cooperate. All right, we'll call that flat. So basically, you would take the scissors and cut out along these edges. And those would be your edges that you cut. The only edges that are not cut, as you might guess, is the middle here. There's no scissor cuts there, and there's no scissor cut here. We're going to make this as flat as possible. So, let's go back to our original cube, and let's unwrap this. So, how do we make those scissor cuts? Well, before we make the scissor cuts, let's go ahead and unwrap it without making the scissor cuts, just so you can see what happens. Let's go to, we want to go over to our UV image editor. That's where you do your texturing work and you want to select your object, tab into edit mode, and you want to A, use the A key to make sure everything is selected, and if I just was to unwrap this as it is, I would select U, choose unwrap, and there it is. And if you make sure you're in face view over here, select a face and G move it around you can see all these faces are laying right upon each other so if you were to make an image export this out make an image put it over this it is gonna hit every single face in other words if you wanted the number one on every side every side of this uh, box that would be the way to do it just leave it like it is unwrap it have all these faces here put the number one on there and you would have the same image just replicated over this box. But that, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to have different images on different sides of the box. So in order to do that, you're going to want to mark the seams. So what you can do, probably the easiest thing to do for a cube like this, just go into edge mode here and I'm going to T into my tools menu. And over here is not only the, you know, you got some UV mapping tools here, 
not only the unwrap menu that you've seen with, you know, when I use the U key, but all, also you have mark seam and clear seam. And that, think of the seams as your pair of scissors. So what we want to do is basically we know that the bottom edges we don't want to cut. We're going to leave those the way they are, but the top here is also one that we don't want to cut. We want to cut everything else. So I'm just going to select all the edges that we want to cut. So it's going to be that one. I'm going to shift select that one. Shift select that one. Shift select that one. This one's going to be cut. That one's going to be cut. And that one's going to be cut. So you have to kind of do some thinking, especially when you get into something more complex than a cube, on how this is going to, you know, cut and then lay out. Like I said, just like uh, think about it like a piece of paper and what you would cut. So once you got your seams selected, then you would mark seam. You can see that they change color a little bit. And if I, I uh, A, deselect everything, you can really see that it's kind of, the seams are kind of red. So everywhere you see a red uh, seam, that's where you're going to get a cut. So I'm going to A, select everything again. And I could just unwrap from here, or I can use my U key choose unwrap when I do that you can see it's all nice and flattened out so that we can use this to make um, put an actual image on so that's going to be the next part how do we add an image to this well what you want to do is you want to use this as your uh, guide in order to place your images on here so what you do is you come down here to UVs UV menu and you want to export UV layout It'll bring you over to this menu where you want to do an export. And I'm just going to create another directory and call it UV just so I can keep track of it. Create that directory. And I'm going to call this cube underscore UV. And by default, it's on a PNG, which is fine. You can change it down here. But you do want to look down here because normally you want to select all UVs is what you want to export and the size you want to look at for a you know cube and I'm going to put a fairly you know not not any high res image on this cube so I can leave it at 1024 by 1024 when I do some work on like uh, say if you're making a car or you know some vehicle or something that you want a lot of detail on a lot of times I'll bump it up to like 2048 by 2048 so I'm going to leave it at 1024 by 1024 Fuel capacity is the lines that you see on your UV map. In other words, you're going to see those little square lines that you've seen in your UV map. If you put it on zero, you're not going to see anything, of course. And if you bump this up, you're going to, it's going to be darker lines. The fuel opacity of 0.25 is generally fine. So we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to export. Okay, so we just exported our UV map. And let's go take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to find the uh, UV that I saved. And I'm bringing it into Photoshop. Of course, you're free to use GIMP. I've used GIMP. And I've been using Photoshop recently. So that's what I'm using. I don't uh, want to make this out of a graphic program tutorial. I mean, if you don't know how to use Photoshop or GIMP, that's a completely separate topic. And I'm sure there's a lot of tutorials on the internet about that. But we'll do what we need to do in the graphics program, and then we'll bring it back into Blender. So as you can see, you can see your, your UV layout. And this you're going to use as a guide to place the images that you want on here. Now, we could take a texture, and we could put it all over this, and it would be the same. But we're, what we're going to do is we're going to put different images in each uh, area that we're looking at. Because these, this is square, and it's kind of like a you know, perfect example, and this, this whole image right here is 1024 by 1024. You can see that it's broken up in four sections. And it's four sections this way, and it's really four sections that way. So all I did is I divided uh, 1024 by 4, and that come up with 256. So I know that a 256 by 256 image is going to fit in here. So that makes it kind of easy. I mean, you're, um, as you do a texturing, you know, you're not always going to have perfect squares and all that, but... Just as an example, this, this luckily this is an easy one. So what I'm going to do on this layer, I'm just going to change this to be called UV, just so I'll keep track of which one's the UV layer. And I'm going to go get some of the images that I downloaded. 
So I'm just going to put these images on there. So let's grab this one. I'm going to copy this one and paste it into here. And luckily, Photoshop just knocks it right in there because it's the exact same size. Of course, you know, if you had a different size image that you needed to put in there, you can always rearrange the size and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to very quickly grab the rest of these images and put them in there. And we'll leave that just like that. I'm not going to put any images on the very top or the very bottom. So you'll notice that because this is a transparent image, on this particular image you're going to have a white background. On these other images where they're actually transparent, you're not going to see anything of the image in here. You're just going to get the probably the blue material that's on the box. So once I have my images laid out like I want on my UV map, then what I usually do is I come over here and I hide the UV layer. Other, if you don't do that, you're going to get you know the lines and everything showing up on your your uh, 3D model. So I'm just going to save my my layout here, but I'm going to change this to be called texture. And I'm just saving the, the Photoshop file right now just to be able to have it for later in case I need to edit it. But now I need to make my actual texture image. So I'm going to do a file, save as. And I'm just going to make this a TIFF. You can use TIFF or PNG. Would be fine. Uh, normally you want to stick with formats like that that can handle the transparency. So I'm going to turn off layers and I'm just going to save this as a TIFF and actually I usually make a new directory called textures just so I can again differentiate that from my regular UV maps and everything and save it. So once I have that saved go back into Blender and what we need to do is tell the UV map that we want to use that image. So how do you do that? Well, make sure that your object is selected go over to your materials and I created a material and called it blue. And let me tab back into object mode so we can see it. Okay. So what we need to do is we now need to, to assign this material to it through the node editor. So right now it's using diffuse, which is fine. And we're going to come over here to one of the windows and we're going to choose node editor. And we're going to say use nodes here. And we want to use our shader nodes. Okay, so I'm going to control up arrow full screen so we can see what we're doing. So right now, just a basic diffuse on there. What we're going to do, I'm going to do a shift A to add a node. And I'm going to add a texture node, and it's an image texture. So let's move this over here. I'm going to do a shift A. I'm going to add an input node, which is texture coordinate. Now. I found that you don't always need the texture coordinate, but it's a good practice to go ahead and do this. But basically what the texture coordinate does is tells uh, the image, you know, which, or the model, which coordinates to use in order to place the image. And in this case, we're, we've got a UV map that we're going to place it on. So I'm going to run this UV map right into the vector here. And I'm going to run this color node right into the color here. And that's the basic setup. And then we want to go get our our image texture and do an open, go to our textures, bring in our texture there, and that is a basic setup that we can use. So I'm going to control up arrow back to my screen here, and let me go ahead and set up the camera here. Okay, actually, it's pretty much set up there. Hit F12 to render. And there's our basic texture on our cube. I'm just going to set this on um, rendered because it's a small object, so we can easily go into rendered mode and kind of, as you can see, you got the basic textures right on the uh, 3D model. Let's go back into solid view. And also, of course, you can go into rendered, I'm sorry, texture if you want to. And that's just another way to look at it. Actually, it's 
for something simple like this, it's a lot easier to look at it like that. So there we have it, our basic cube textured. Uh, I mentioned something about the blue would show through because it's transparent, it's gonna pick up the material, but that's not correct. Um, if you wanted, of course, the, the, um, a different color other than what is shown here, you know, the transparency, you can, of course, just take your paintbrush and fill in, uh, create a box and fill in that area and make it a different color. And then, of course, that would show through on your uh, render. So we've looked at basically how to unwrap your object. So, in other words, take it like a piece of paper with a pair of scissors, make it completely flat, mark your seams, do your UV unwrap, and you export your UV, put your textures on, and then render it. And that, of course, is a very simplified version of texturing, but at least uh, for those starting out, it'll get you started in the right direction. And hopefully at a later time, I'm going to come up with a little bit more advanced tutorial on texturing. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.